if you know that you know that you are in for this service, lift up your hands and give God praise this evening. Give God praise because every service is an opportunity to be blessed again. Every service is an opportunity to move to the next level. Every service is an opportunity for expansion. Every service is an opportunity for increase. Hallelujah. Maybe we should wait. Everybody, look at me. You know, one of the things that we were taught recently is how to maximize. I was talking with some people some, some time ago, and I said, a lot of people miss things because they wait for a certain time. Some people will feel may, maybe blessings come at a particular time. You don't know that even right now, things are moving. As you are coming into the service, because we, things are already happening. So if you are waiting for a certain time, you would have missed some things. Lift up your hands and give God praise for what is coming in this service. Raise your hands and open your heart for the blessings that God is ready to, re to release in this service. If you are looking around now, you are, you are just wasting time. If you are doing some other thing, apart from what we are doing right now, you are not in the spirit of the service. Give God praise for the increase that God is releasing. Give God praise for the blessing that is coming in this service. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Some people are still looking around, looking, trying to, to comprehend. Some people are still trying to, oh, service has started. But give God praise. Let your heart be opened for what is coming. Lord, we give you all the praise. Last week, we were told that we should empty ourselves to God, for God. And in Philippians 2.13, message translation. One thing that we were taught last week is that your relevance, you are the one that decides your relevance. And each time, we were taught that every, every process is important. And I, I'm, I'm glad to tell you that this service is also important because it's part of the process that God is ready to take you through. So don't waste this time. Don't waste this opportunity. He says that energy is God's energy and energy deep within you. God himself willing and working and what we give him the most pleasure. Let's read it. I've read my own. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. It's God's energy and energy deep within you. God himself willing and working at what we give him the most pleasure. Who is working here? I said, who is working here? Yeah. And we all know that the word of God is God. So the amount of the word of God a person has is the amount of what we work in him. If, you, if, 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 if it is what you have in you that we work for you, the level of the word of God that you have. Now this service, be ready to receive more. Because the more you receive, the more of the word of God that will work in your life. Hallelujah. Right in this service, we, are, we have a lot of things to be blessed by. We... We are going to be watching in, in just um, after, after now. We are going to be watching a, a, a video prophecy. Let your heart. It's not just those things. Some people are always carried away. It's not played for play. Say it's not played for play. It's not a waste of time. Don't just look and be carried away. Be ready to be blessed by it. Amen. Amen. And also, we are going to be. Enjoying a duet by Pastor Samson and his wife. How come it is pride? It is duet that everybody is clapping for because it's top, especially singles. They are the ones. They, I think one day meet where we, I we also sing with my spouse. Hallelujah! And then we will also, of course, say, of course, the word of God. Remember what I said when I first got here that the amount of the word of God a person has. Is what is going to work. Now, be ready to, to, to take in everything. Say, I take in everything. Face your neighbor. Say, I take in everything. Every word of God. That I take in everything. And everything is working for me. Hallelujah. So let's be ready to be blessed by the video. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
I see a building. You are building your own economy. Jesus. I was also sing a song. But let me convert that song to prophecy. From today, when we mention prosperity, your life will be the definition from now. Yeah. Declare in the name of Jesus, prosperity is in everything you do. Yeah. Gentiles we know that there's something different about you from today. Yeah. I hear something in my spirit. The era of explanation is gone. Yeah. You know what I just said? Everybody look at me. God said I will help you. He said and you will know that this is my help. The son of Pastor Temple, Calisto Presia, I command. You will not only bring it to pass in your lifetime, you will take it to the next generation. Now, your manifestations will bring the right creature to you. God said the Spirit of God, the kings among them will emerge. The thrones shall be established. Amen. Your manifestation will sustain cities. Amen. Say in the name of Jesus, Amen. I am empowered Amen. to prosper. Amen. Say my latter end, Amen. prosperity. Amen. Shout is a prosperity. Amen. Shout hallelujah. And I declare, it is your time for songs of prosperity. Thank you, Lord. Show their bosses go tayaba. Glory to God. Everybody worship God for two minutes. Worship God. If you have a word of praise, give it to him now. Because you will have some now. Whatever is there to cross, you will cross it. And whatever is there to take, you will take it. Amen. All these hands lifted. Just say the Lord, there is no empty hand. Amen. I declare to you now, A. Wherever they call power, God will take you there. Amen. You know, I see, I also see in my spirit multiple streams of income. Hey. The Lord told me while we are praying that some people will get so rich, Nigeria will not be able to contain your prosperity. Hey! Hey! Don't say the Spirit of God, walk sanctuary. Everything you want to do in this season, go ahead and do it. Because you will never be ashamed. Just lift your hands to Jesus, come on. This song talks about the love of Christ because it came to die for you. Hallelujah. Before I spoke a word, you are singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. I do deserve it, I do deserve it. 
deserve it Still you give yourself away your foe, steal your love for, for me. Ah. You have been so, so good to me. Ah. When I felt no word, you paid it all for me. Oh God, you have been so, so kind to me.
is good. And all the time, if God has been good this week, can we lift our hands and give him praise? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Oh, hallelujah. Can we lift our hands and give God praise? Glory to your name, Lord of heaven and earth. We give you all the praise. Make sure your focus is on Jesus. So Lord, I give you praise this evening. Everyone, can you lift your hands and just give God praise? I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus. Hey, we give you praise. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. I give you praise, Jesus. There is no one like you. Glory to your name, Lord of heaven and earth. I worship you. I give you praise because you are good. 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 Lord, you are good. I can say that you are good. I don't just believe you are good. I know because you have been good to me. And you've been good to us, and that's why we are giving you praise. That's why we are worshiping. That's why we are giving you praise. That's why we are lifting our hands. Because you've been good. You are good. You are good. We are singing of your love. And your greatness. And your loving kindness. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Come on, shut up. Glory to your name, Lord. Everyone, can you just pray in the spirit? Pray in the spirit. The glory of God is here. The anointing of God is here. I see that many of us are participating already because we can see what God is doing. Lift your body hands and pray in the spirit. Every moment is very important. The minister came now and told us how that every moment 
moment is important. Lift your hands and give God praise. Every moment is important in every service. Every moment is important in every service. Miracles are happening in this service already. Miracles are happening in this service already. I see hearts receiving already in this service. Hearts are receiving already in this service. Laba shatalaba. Get a bada by your basha. Our hearts are open. Our hearts are receiving. And our God is right here. Is right here. Is right here. Glory to your name, God. You got one more minute to pray in the spirit. Shada bakato la ba shada da da da. Yada ba shada da da. Bakoba shada la ba ya ba ya ba. Iga da ma na ma na ma sha. Shere ba da ba da 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 ma sha. Lord, I give you praise. Glory to your name. The anointing of God is in this service already. And I see everyone receiving from God already. The angels of God are already in this building and they are delivering, making deliveries to everyone. Making delivery. Because I see everyone came with an expectation. Please, can you just lift your two hands? Lift your two hands. To the throne, Iga banana mash, banana banana, Ede bahana hana, Iga suma na mash, na makai subinia, Riga na mane ne ne mo sa na mana na mash, da ya da ba, Kama na mana no sa, Iga suba ne de sa, Jaba da da ba da da ba da da. If I give you one more minute to pray in this service, can you do it? Can you just do it one more time? Because there is a lot that is happening in this place, I'm telling you. A lot is happening in this service, both on site and online. Lift your two hands and pray in the spirit. One more time for the next one minute. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Is God good? Has God been good? Has God been good, sir? Lord, we give you praise in this service. There's so many things God is doing in this service already. I just see answers everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. I see possibilities everywhere. Thus said the Spirit of God, nothing shall be impossible after now. Everything you want to do, nothing, nothing will be impossible. Anytime you get to any junction and it's looking like it's impossible, remember the word of God tonight. Nothing is impossible. Wow. What a service. What a service. Do you remember what the Lord just told you just now? He said nothing is impossible. When nothing is impossible, then what is it to fear? You fear nothing. Oh my goodness. There's so many things happening in this service. Wow. So many things happening in this service. Lord, we receive all. Mm -mm. 
You know that hymn that says showers of blessing. There are showers of blessing indeed in this service. There are indeed showers of blessing in this service. There are indeed showers of blessing in this service. You remember the scripture we read some time ago? Last week we read it also. The former rain, the rain, the former rain, the latter rain in the first month. Do you remember? Oh, glory to your name, God. Oh, glory to your name, God. Oh, hallelujah to your name, God. These blessings are international. They are international blessings, not just domestic. Indra Subada Bakaya. Get ready for international calls after this service. Get ready for international messages after this service. Mm -mm. My goodness. Oh, hallelujah. What a service. What a service. Can we lift up our right hands right now? Father, we give you all the praise in this service. Because indeed you are Lord. You are King. You are God. There is no one like you. We worship you. We bow before you. We esteem you. We lift you high. We elevate you. We lift you high. Lord of heaven and earth, you are God. You are God. You came to me in my closet some weeks ago and said to me, I think I was driving that day actually, on my way home, you said to me, you said, daughter, do you know that no matter what happens, I remain God? I've always had the fear of God, but that day I began to fear you even more. Because even if the world turns upside down, nothing changes you from being God. Even if this world is destroyed, nothing takes your place as God. Hmm. Even if the whole of humanity decides like they always run their mouth and say that you do not exist. Nothing changes you from being God. You remain on your throne forevermore. No one can dethrone you. As Komane Kashaba. Indra Toba Kayadada. The Bible says only a fool will say that God does not exist. That there is no God. Only a fool. We say that because of what is happening or not, God is no longer God or walks away from God. Such a man is a fool because he is the one that loses. God never loses. Lord, we stand in awe of you in this service. And we give you all the glory that is due your name. We honor you. We revere you. We reverence you. It is because of you that we are here. Because we love you. We are not part of the people that use you. We do not use God. We have rather come for service that is to serve you. Because service means I have come to serve. Lord, we give you all the praise. Thank you for your word that is rich among us. Thank you for your word coming to us again today. Because we know that it will enlighten the eyes of our understanding and find absolute place and expression for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we have our seats, we have to give honor to whom honor is due. And all honor and all praise belongs to our father and our mother that has given us such a great privilege. Thank you so much for honoring them for me. Thank you, Father and Mother, for my life. I can do this till the end of the service because it's never ending. You remember that song that says you are unending? 
And our mother, your grace is unending. Your words are unending. Your spirit is unending. Your grace is unending. Haba, Ayaba, Hana. Everywhere I turn to, I see you. Everywhere. In everything that I do, I see you. Thank you. What an abundance of grace. If you've been privileged to be here in what sanctuary, you know it's an abundance that we enjoy. God has not given us himself in small doses. He has given us an abundance in the person of our father and our mother. Thank you for your spirit. And for such a great privilege because I do not take it for granted in any way. We are not part of the people that always ask questions like, I don't know how I deserve it or something. I think the original version of this song says, I don't deserve it or something like that. That's not true because as children of God, we do deserve it. And I love how that they change the lyrics to, I do deserve it. Because we are originally from God. You remember that we were in God, Psalm 90. Before we came into this world, God has been our dwelling place. So it doesn't matter how that the devil deceived us, we still belong to God. Because the devil does not create any man, he does not own any man. God, we are God's design. We are God's creation. We are not just even a creation, we are his sons and we are his daughters because he gave birth to us. And so I'm not going to stand here and say I don't deserve it. But the reality is that it is such a great privilege. And it is such a great opportunity to be standing here. Because like I always say, it could have not been like this. I could have easily walked away. I could have followed friends. I could have done anything. I could have decided that this is not where I'm supposed to be. Like some people said some time ago that this place was just a stepping stone. I could have also decided that. But God has been good. And we give God all the glory. I give the praise and honor to all my spiritual parents. I can't tell it. I can't tell it all. I can't tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. Thank you for fatherhood and motherhood, which is the greatest. You are not just our pastors, your father and our mother, and you keep being our father and our mother. Thank you for making our lives quality. I'm sure everyone here is living quality lives. Because the word of God here is quality. Oh, hallelujah. I also honor all my esteemed pastors. Highly esteemed pastors. Thank you so much, sirs. I bow. I really honor and revere you, sirs, from the depth of my heart. Art. Thank you for all the great work that we are doing everywhere that we are. People of God, help me celebrate my pastors. You, are, you might have no idea what it means, but please help me celebrate them. I honor all my ministers also, and everyone in the hierarchy. I especially want to honor everyone on the field right now in Abuja. Because we are having a very great show. God told me that show on Sunday is going to be very ginormous. Like my son will say. It's going to be gigantic. It's going to be great. Every evidence of greatness in Abuja on Sunday. So I honor everyone. Uh, one of my ministers was telling me today that they went for evangelism in a very, you know, in one environment around that place since morning doing the work of God. We celebrate you, sirs. Thank you so much. The advanced team and everyone, we celebrate you, sirs. All right. So can you celebrate your neighbor right now? And tell them how blessed they are. And then you can have your seats. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Somebody, can you just say, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. All right. So, you know, last week, I started by asking us what we brought for our neighbors. Do you remember that? All right. So, today, what did you bring to church? Everybody is suddenly quiet. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people are just suddenly. Well, ask your neighbor why the sudden silence. It's time to ask that neighbor what they brought to church for you. What did they come to church with? I'm going to ask people again today, so it's just better you talk to your neighbor. Because we are, also, we are always supposed to come with something to church. So was it only last week that you came with something? Do you have anything today? Ask your neighbor anything for me. Anything for me today? Those of us watching online also, ask the person around you. Anything for me today? Some people are just you know, typing on their phone right now. There's, this, there's nothing to type on your phone. I'm not preaching yet. There's no scripture yet. Did your neighbor bring something for you? Okay, it's like, just decide. What's happening in the middle session? What's happening in this session? Did your neighbors bring something for you? My musicians, your, your neighbor didn't bring anything. So if they brought something for you, what did they bring? Because truly, we are not supposed to come to church empty. And this is supposed to be our custom, really. What did you come to church with? Ask your neighbor now, what did they come to church with? Since they said they came with something for you, let them talk. You remember we, last week we prayed for our neighbors and we said a maximum of seven days. Do you remember? Do you remember, sirs? So are you sitting with any of your neighbors or can you see any of your neighbors that you sat with last week? Can you just ask them, do you have testimonies? Because I know that there are testimonies in this place. Because when we prayed last week, God answered us. So does your neighbor have testimonies? Or the person you sat with, last, in case you can see them, do they have testimonies? I'm very certain they are testimonies. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. So have you settled it? Did your neighbor come with something for you? I think the yes is stronger now. That will tell you that you will be the most blessed in this service. Because you are not just, you know, receiving the blessing. You are also sitting with people that are blessed themselves. So it's super blessing. You remember, you remember two weeks ago, Father was telling us that the, the anointing, the Spirit of God is contagious. So if your, if your neighbor carries a load of blessings, what do you think is going to happen to you? You see, that's why you have to be careful the person you are sitting with. That question you asked just now is to let you know whether the neighbor you are sitting with is the right, right neighbor or not. Because I want some contagious anointing in this service. I want some contagious blessings in this service. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. You know what I'm seeing in this service? As we are here listening to the word of God, God is doing some things outside this place. I see some of us in our homes. God is doing things. Right here, yeah, right. I'm telling you, I'm not even joking. God is doing some, some people is in their workplace. God is making some things happen. Shagaba kayaba. I see some meeting. There's a meeting right now going on concerning somebody. And it is just favor. It's just favor. It's just favor. It's just favor. Some people, I'm serious. They are mentioning your names right now. And all that I see is favor. Right here, right now. Hey, hey. Kaba, please have your seat. Sir. Indra Sobahan. Mm. I also came with a testimony. Shadabakaba. 
testimonies. In fact, wow, I'm, I'm getting excited already in this service. My goodness. Last week, God, you know, it was such a great blessing. Am I right, sirs? Why? Because the Spirit of God was teaching us. After the blessing, what next? After the blessing, what next? And last thing that we were talking about, or we, we spoke about that we were taught in the Word of God, is that after the blessing, prayer is very important. After the blessing, it's very important that we pray. We are going to be praying. You know, last week we prayed. And everything that we, 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 we said has come to pass. I know that for a certain. We are going to be praying because this is our sin of prayer. Those of us that have been in Central Group 1, I celebrate you greatly, sirs. Because we've been praying and God has been, he has been doing everything. Uh, uh, do I have witnesses here? Those of us that have been praying. I noticed that some of us joined the group, but we are not usually in prayer. Ask your neighbor. How far? Are you on Central Group 1? If they tell you yes, ask them, when last were you in prayer? Because that is what God is doing now. I said that is what God is doing now. Because there are a lot of people, but it's time to pray. We are seeing some funny number of people. And God said I should mention it in this service. That's why I'm talking about it. Because don't be left out of what God is doing, sir. You know why? Because I really love what Minister Oida said when she was, you know, doing the service introduction. She said every part and every aspect of the service is very important. Do we remember? So don't trivialize any aspect. Some people will say, mm, you know, that's why some people before now used to come late to church. They say, well, maybe it's a worship we used to start. After worship, then maybe choir administration. After choir administration, then we'll be what? Let me time it. If they are starting service by 5.15, then maybe by around maybe to 6, what should have started? Or 5.15. So they will time it and come 5.15. No, you have already missed 30 minutes of the goodness of God. In fact, if you are not careful, more than that. Because there are some people that are already seated before the service even starts. How do you expect that your blessing will be the same? Every aspect is very important. Say something like that to yourself. Don't trivialize every as, any aspect. So when we come to the house of God and we are told to do anything, even if you are not told, do it. When it's time to worship, worship with the whole of your heart. When it's time to pray, pray with the whole of your heart. When it's time to lift your hands, lift your hands. It's the evening sacrifice. Don't forget. It's as the evening sacrifice. Lift your hands well. Because every aspect of a service is very important. You can't trivialize any aspect. When it's time to pray, pray. Like I always say, like your life depends on it. Because you can't just come and say, well, you know, sometimes some people just do as if, uh, yeah, at least we have an, another opportunity to pray. If we don't pray when now, we pray again. No. Treat every aspect as if it's your last time. You say it's time to worship, worship like it's your last time. Pray like it's your... <laughs> My goodness, Lord, I give you all the praise. So last week, God was telling us, you know, of course, from the words that we've heard and the word of God that has come to us in the previous week, or weeks, rather, how that the creation or the creature is waiting for our manifestation. Amen. Amen. Are we in this service? The creature is waiting for our expectation, our manifestation. And we were taught how that until we manifest, we don't know those that are waiting for us. Do you remember? So we have to go out first. We have to do what we have to do first. We have to exhaust ourselves in the house of God and in the service of God and empty ourselves in the service of God first. Why? Because until we manifest, we don't know those that are waiting for us. And then we were taught in the word of God also about lineage. How that we are supposed to be the relevance of our lineage. And how that it is our work with God that distinguishes us. Do you remember, sirs? It's our work with God that distinguishes us. And we give examples like Abraham. 
how that it was when, he, like Enoch also. The Bible talks about how that Enoch walked with God. That was his distinguishing. Everyone before him, they just mentioned their name. They gave birth to them and then they also married and they also gave birth and they gave birth and they now died. Is that not the circle of every human being? That's the circle of every human being. So they give birth to you, like we are always taught, they give birth to you, you go to school, you get a job, right? You get married, you give birth to children, you work for a few more years, you retire, and die off. That's the cycle of every human, or cycle. And it has been like that from the, from the beginning. So you read the genealogies, and it's the same thing. And this one begat this one after he was 100 years old. And after he begat this one, he now lived this number of years. And after he lived this number of years, he... The same thing. And you see in just about five verses, a whole... For, for Genesis chapter 5 now, you see how long those people were living for? 900 and something years. 800 and something years. 900. You just keep seeing 900. And, but in this 900 and something years, the only thing that was said about it was just in two verses. Somebody lived 900 and something years, 69 years, one of them. And the only thing that was said about this almost a century, is it not a century it's called? 1,000 years, a century, right? No, 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 a millennium. A century is 100 years. A millennium is 1,000 years, right? So a person lived almost a, a whole millennium. And the only thing that was said about this person was just in how many verses? Two verses. Why? Because there was no walk with God. The one that walked with God was the one that was distinguished. And we read about Abraham also in chapter 11. How that it was his walk with God that distinguished him from the whole lineage. And because he was separated, he separated himself by hearing God, by following what God said, his lineage, we now have to trace it. Same thing for Jesus also in Matthew chapter 1. Do we remember? All the names that were mentioned were mentioned for the sake of Jesus. Because he was the one that was distinguished. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we give you all the praise. Thank you for what you are doing among us. Lord, we give you praise for all that you are doing among us because you are... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. How many of us are witnesses to the fact that nothing is the same here? Everything has changed. My ministers here in the headquarters, I don't know if you have noticed that everything has changed, even here. Those of us that are in other installations, I am sure that you have noticed that things have changed. And you know, it brings me to one of the things that the Spirit of God said to me about this service. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Lord, we give you all the praise. Kaba ananama. Can you just pray in your spirit for 30 seconds where you're seated? Jedeba kabra dadaba. Lord, I just give you the praise. Oh, hallelujah to your name. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, God said to me, he said, I'm the one in charge of your life. He said, I should tell everyone. I'm the one in charge of your life. And wherever I lead you, follow. What do we do? We follow. Wherever he leads us, where do we do? Where, what do we do? It? We follow. You know, we remember that song that says, Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him. Oh. We are going to go with him all the way. Why? Because our lives are a sacrifice on God's altar. Remember 2 Timothy 4 verse 6. Anyway, so the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become. All things are become. All things are become. So God said in this season, all things have become new. Oh. <laughs> hey, Lord, I just give you the praise. Oof. My goodness. People of God, can you see? Can you just see what God is doing in this service at all? I'm, I'm just saying so many wonderful things. Hey. Don't forget, God just said it now. He said, I am the one in charge of your life. So whatever, I, wherever I lead you, what do you do? Go. Follow it. Another thing he said just now, he said, whatever I tell you to do, do it. This word is for somebody here. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. Why? Because I am the one in charge of your life. Hmm. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. Now, a lot of us quote this scripture to mean, of course, it means that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature, and all things are passed away, all things have become new, truly. All things have become new, truly. Romans 12, from verse 1. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Stay in verse 2, sir. Be not conformed to this world. So, back to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He that is in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, Romans 12, verse 2 is now telling us, or verse 1, go to verse 1. He said, I beseech you therefore, what did he call them? What did he call them? Brethren. Brethren. That is, brothers and sisters in the Lord. So, <laughs> this man, this woman, have accepted Christ. This man, this woman, have accepted Christ. So, he's speaking to them as brethren. That they should, first of all, present their bodies a living sacrifice. I really love what the word of God that came to us in the past Life Central meeting. How many of us were there? See, that's another thing that God is doing in this season. Life Central. If you're not on Life Central, I wonder where you are. In the last, last Life Central meeting, we were taught. Because we are talking about the seven things the blood of Jesus did. And we were taught how that the blood of Jesus brought us near. That's Ephesians 2 verse 13, if I'm correct. Ephesians 2 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off were made nigh by the blood of the blood of Christ brought us near. Because the word nigh there means, can we see it in another translation? But now, okay, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. So the blood of Christ brought us near. That's amazing. So if a man becomes saved, he has been brought near. So that's just a step. <clears throat> that's amazing. He is brought near. He is brought near.
uh, in the stone window. Are you, this is that one. Are you near Minister Samson? Are you far away from him? You are not far. You are near him. Is there a difference between where he is and where Minister Winda is? You are also near her. And you are near him also. And you are also near Minister Joy. As against where my children are. Wow. Wow. So you are just near Christ through the blood of Jesus. So that means when a man accepts Jesus Christ, that is not the end. Because the blood of Jesus only brings you near. That's why we are teaching right now on kings and priests, because that's what we are talking about. Kings and priests. Revelation 1, verse 5. I'm still going to come back to all these scriptures, please. You will have to help me go back. From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own... Are you still with me, sirs? He washed us from our sins in his own blood. Verse 6 now. And has made us... Why are you not answering me, sirs? Kings and... He has made us kings and... Thank God this scripture did not end in he has washed us in his blood. Because washed us in his blood means I am just near Christ. He didn't stop there. He now made you a king and a... Because that's the next level. That's the next level. Because it's just that some people have been, have been washed, have been washed, have been made clean. And that's where they stay for the next 20 years. There's a difference from being near Christ and being in Christ. For those of us that have taken Christianity, have taken Christianity life class, you remember the difference between John's baptism and salvation, repentance and salvation. What was the message of John the Baptist? John the Baptist priest, he said the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, that is, it is near. But when Jesus came, he said, you will be Saved. Romans 10. He said, you will be saved. That is, you will be in the... Hey. When Jesus was going to die on the cross, he looked at that thief that was beside him. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. In, in, in the kingdom. In paradise. He didn't say, you will be near... But... The blood of Jesus, Ephesians 2, brought us near. So there's a next level. Don't just stay in the salvation level. There's a next level. Where are we coming from? Uh, yes. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, He that is in Christ is a new creature. So you come into Christ, you say, I'm a new creature now. And now you as a new creature, they are now telling you in Romans chapter 12. As brethren, look at your neighbor, tell them brother or sister. Verse 1. I beseech you that you present yourself. Ah, present your body rather. Present your body a living so don't just stay in the level of I'm a new creature or new creature. Now it is time to present yourself as a living sacrifice. Holy. Hmm. Holy. Wow. There are so many things, so many scriptures that are just running in my head right now. Holy. Acceptable. Unto God. Which is your reasonable? Present your body a living sacrifice, only acceptable. So a man can be in Christ and his body is not holy. His body is not acceptable unto God. 
And the man does not give God reasonable service. You see, that's why we cannot afford to stay in just being near. Because the blood of Jesus will bring you near. Verse 2. He's talking to brethren. Brethren. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, a man can be in Christ as a brother and a sister, but he is still conformed to the world. And such a person's mind is not transformed. And such a person's mind is not renewed. Now I can begin to understand what our father was telling us some time ago. How that the Spirit of God was asking him after a powerful service. And he wanted to go to the news. And the Spirit of God told him, he said, who is in charge of the news? And he answered that it's the devil. He said, so you finish a service where God was in charge. God moved powerfully. And you want to end it with the devil's reports. Because the news is the devil's report. They will give you all the bad things that is happening in this world. Almost no good news. It's been long I watched any, every, any news. I've never even liked them. But you will hardly sit with one news and you will hear that something good is happening. And yet, the Bible says, the Bible tells me, James, that every good and every perfect gift is from... So if it is not good and if it's not perfect, where is it coming from? It's not from God. It's not from God. So, a man can be in Christ, but his mind is not renewed. His mind is still conformed. God said to tell you, in this season that we are, he said it's a season of new. And when he says new, it means everything new. Lord, I just give you praise in this service. I see testimonies everywhere. Testimony. So I was telling in my service on Wednesday. There's a scripture I love so much. It's also from our Christianity life class. By the way, I want to believe everyone here is in life class. If you're a life class teacher, let me see your hand. I want to celebrate you specially for being a life class teacher. If you're a life class student, let me see your hands. Wow, almost everyone is a life class student. Celebrate yourself. That's the best thing, you know. Now I know why the blessing of God is just so much in this service. Because everybody is learning the word of God. Wow. Hallelujah. Glory. That, that's where the blessing is. Life class is where the blessing is. So in topic one, there's a scripture we read. Just as we enter into Christianity. First John chapter 5. Verse 11. From verse 11. This is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his. He that has the son had life, and he that had not the son of God had not life. Now, I love New King James in verse 11. Verse 11. The Bible says, This is the. This is the. This is the. So, if anybody comes and asks, Do you have a testimony? This is the testimony. Note that the Bible does not say this is a testimony. He said this is the testimony. I love this. This is the testimony. Hey, hey. This is the testimony. Glory. This is the testimony. This is not a testimony. This is the original testimony. Out of this testimony stems every other testimony that we have. 
So when we come and share testimonies every time like this, it is out of the testimony. What is the testimony? That God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his. That's what? He who has the son has. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. This is the testimony. This is the testimony. He that has the Son of God has life. Now, did you notice that this verse does not say, He who believes the Son of God has life. Or he who believes in the Son of God has life. Did you notice? What does it say? He said, he who has cable shot halabai. Break any mana mana. Because there's a difference between being near Christ and being in Christ. There's a difference between being near God and being in God. He who has the son. Brian Enoch, a man can believe in the son and not have the son. That's what the Spirit of God told me. He said, next time you go for evangelism, he said, don't, tell, don't ask them, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Because the Bible tells us that even demons believe and tremble. Next time you go on evangelism, I want to believe some of us are going on evangelism tomorrow. Don't ask them, do you believe in the Son? Ask them, do you have the Son of God? Because it is in having the Son of God that such a man has life. There are a lot of people that believe, but they are going nowhere. You have the Son. Do you have the Son? We have the Son. We have the Son. We have the Son. We have the Son. We have the Son of God. And that is why we have life. That is why this is the testimony. Because we have this life. We have the Son of God and we have life. Nothing around us can be dead. This is the season of harvest. 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 Season of harvest. Nothing around us is permitted to die. It will rather multiply. Because this is the testimony. We have life. We have life. We have life. Lord, I just give you the praise. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You remember some scriptures that was read to us? Some time ago, hey, Hey, oh, God is doing so many things in this service, and I'm just so excited. I don't know about you, but I'm just seeing so many things. God is just doing so many things in this service. In Deuteronomy, Lord, I just give you the praise. 32. We were read, it was two scriptures that was read to us, that particular service. But let me start from Deuteronomy 32. Verse 46. <clears throat> and he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. Next verse. Sir. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. 
And through this thing, ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over, to, over Jordan to possess it. So we were taught that the word of God is our life. The word of God is our life. Hmm. Lord, I just give you the praise. The word of God is our life. So after we have accepted Jesus and now we have life, the word of God is also very important to sustain that life. I'm still speaking to us from Christianity. Topic one. You remember? The bread of life, the water of life, the word of life, the tree of life, the water of life. Do you remember? The word of God is not a vain thing to you because it is your life. Go back to our Romans chapter 12, sir. Verse 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that he presents your body as a living sacrifice. Only acceptable unto God. Don't forget the words we've been hearing for some weeks now on us emptying ourselves and exhausting ourselves in the service of God. Do you remember? These are words that we should never forget. Which is your reasonable service? Verse 2. Be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is it that is going to renew your mind? Your mind. It's only the word of God. Somebody say the word of God. In this new season, the Spirit of God said to me, he said, it's time for us to detox our mind. Because the new cannot be mixed with the old. Get rid of old things. Get rid of old ideologies. Get rid of old beliefs. Because God said in this season, I want to do a new thing. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I was talking about the story that our father said about the news. The Spirit of God came to me in my meditation. He said, for some people it is news. Why for a majority of others, especially in the young generation, it is social media. It is social media. You have received the life of God. You are a new creature. But the mind, the mind. Because the only thing that can stand between a man and the new thing that God is doing in this season is his mind. His mind. The word of God has been coming to us for some weeks now. I've been, they are very serious words, very pro, profound words, very powerful words. Hearing from our father, hearing from our highly esteemed Pastor Jackson, I was so blessed by that service. I kept re repeating the service. I listened to it that very day, more than two times. Because any, every time I'm done with my service, every time I'm done with my service on Sunday, the first thing you will see me doing is streaming the service. In the headquarters. Highly esteemed, highly esteemed minister Windu coming to us sharing the word of God. Profound words, words. God said to me, the only thing that can stand between a man and what he's doing right now is his mind. Because now we are being taught that is the time for manifestation. The creature is waiting for us. It's time for us to spread through prosperity. Someone came to me after my service on Wednesday and was asking me, how do I, how do I, you know, do the word of God that we are hearing every time? I'm not sure that's, that's the exact way the person put it. But it was something like, how do you, um, you know, we are taught how that we are not supposed to be hearers of the word, but we should be doers of the word. So it was like, how can I be a doer of the word that I'm hearing? I said, sir, there is, no, there is no special way to do the word of God. Just do it. The word of God comes to you. The word of God comes with instructions for you. 
Just do it. There is no how to. I love the way Pastor Jackson puts it every time. He said it is it, that very thing you don't like doing. That's what you should do. Because you know that's your next level. Do it. And do it. Because you know that's your next level. There's no special way of doing the word of God. When it comes to you, just do it. And Pastor Jackson will keep saying, he said, do it immediately. As it is coming to you, do it immediately. Don't think about it because it's when you start thinking about it that you start calculating. The word of God is your life. The word of God is our life. Don't be conformed to this world. Some of us have to get rid of those places that we go, especially online. Some people don't use their legs to step to different places, but in their minds, they have gone to all the countries of this world. They have entered all the clubs in this world. In their minds, they have, they have done everything that can be done. But their legs are, in their, they are on their beds. They are on their beds. The devil has, is, is, I mean, he is now so sleek. He doesn't need to force any man out of his house. All he needs to do is to take hold of the man's mind. That's why the word of God tells us that we cannot afford to be conformed with, to this world. The Lord said to me, he said, a number of people, I want to do new things in their lives, but their minds and their hearts is set on the things that they have heard. The things that they have been told. The conversations that have been said around them, that have been held around them. That's what their mind is still holding on to. Yet I want to do a new thing in this person's life. have become new. Really? I was in my service some weeks ago. And we were, I can't really remember what we were talking about. But of course, we were talking about being kings and priests according to the word of God that is coming to us in these days. And you know, I, I asked the question. I said, are all my brothers in the house? How would you feel how would you feel if the woman, you know, that you're about to get married to, or the woman that you're married to, comes and starts calling you something like, my king? You know, my king and all of that. And honestly, the responses I heard in that service, I didn't expect it. So I started passing the mic around. How would you feel if the woman in your life, you know, the woman of God calls you my king? <laughs> and I started hearing responses like, I don't want. I said, why? Some of the things I was hearing is that, hmm, when a woman begins to call you that kind of name, <laughs> I wish I did not say the answer. I wish I passed the mic around in this service to hear what people will say. I started hearing like, if, 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 if a woman starts calling you things like that, hmm, you better be careful. <laughs> so he was saying, I will just run away. I said, why? He says, you hear things like, if a woman starts calling you my king, my lord, you know, sometimes it is when women want to collect things from you, they start calling you such things. You see, I'm already even getting, I'm getting responses already. Someone is telling me I'm on point. Another person was telling me that, hmm, that, you know, calling me such a name, it means responsibility is about to get to the next level. <laughs> I was like, what kind of responsibility is she said, it's, um, such a man was like, the man was like, ah, if I was that calling you, I can't. I mean, they have done a lot. Oh, you're about to do a lot. And you know, so she's already psyching you up with those names. I was just wondering, I said, what? Wow. Honestly speaking, what I was hearing in that service, I did not expect. And 
it was a lot more than this, honestly. It was a lot more than this. But I got home after the service and I started meditating. I said, what exactly is going on? You know, some people said, you know, they didn't, maybe they didn't put it that way, but they were saying something like, they know, for example, that they are not what being called that name. So they will want to, some, some, somebody actually said, she can start calling him that like after 10 years of marriage. I was just hearing all sorts of responses. So I started meditating. I said, why did all these kind of responses come? It means that there are some certain things already in the minds of these brothers about women. You know, we're hearing in some service, Father was even referencing it in one, I think in one meeting or in one service. He was talking about Pastor Thompson and some people around him just started saying, oh, Biri, oh, Biri, where did it come from? Internet, social media. So what do they say about Obiri on social media? Ah, be careful. A woman can bring you down. A woman can kill you. A woman can destroy you. Those are the things that are on social media. Those are the things that are being said. You remember this footballer some time ago? What's his name again? I forgot. What? Akimi, Akimi, whatever. Those are the things that are on the heads of men. So you come, uh, they, they are in Christ, though, my minister. They are in Christ. They are in Christ. But in their mind, the way they look at every woman around, hmm. what is in their mind is, oh, Barry. So God even tells them now, say, this is the woman that I have, you know, that is for you, this is the woman you are supposed to get married, this is, this is the woman I've ordained for your destiny. And in their mind, oh, Barry. So every movement that she makes, they're already calculating. Ah, Abi, Abi. I remember that they said, that's what is in their mind. On the other side, too, on the side of the woman. What is around them? What is in their mind? Men are scum. Men are. Men are. Men are. Hey! Men, every man is a cheat. No man can be faithful. Those are the things that are in your mind. Every man, no man can be faithful to one woman. They will go out. I don't think it was here I was saying it. But I remember when I was in school, the same conversations happened when I was in 100 level and 400 level. The same. I was in the hostel. I stayed in the hostel throughout. In my 100 level, I think we were, there were about maybe two Muslims or so, and other, others were Christians. And at some point, they just started having a conversation. The funny thing is that I saw both Christian and Muslim agreeing to the same point. What's the point? No man can be faithful to one woman. He might not bring her home, but don't, don't bother yourself. He's doing it. And the Christians were saying, yes, it's true. <laughs> At some point in that, um, I was in 100 level. I couldn't take it away. I walked out of the hostel because what are these people trying to put? That's why we have to be careful of the conversations that we find ourselves. Because they are un unknowingly staying in your mind. That's why the word of God has to be your life. That's the only thing that can, should characterize your mind. If not, these other conversations will be there. The same thing happened in my 400 level. The same thing. Muslim and Christian in the same hostel, in the same room. They were agreeing to the same fact that there is no man that will not cheat. All you need to do is just take care of your children. Another one was saying as long as he doesn't bring her home, I'm fine. One of them was my, uh, my roommate. She, she was, she's a Christian. She was saying something like, yes, it's true. That in fact, because she was already in a relationship then, and she was about to get married, she said, in fact, the guy she's about to get married to, she knows that he, he cheats. In fact, she was even telling us how that she, she caught him one time, but till now, 
she do, he doesn't know that she caught him. Because he claimed to be in a particular state only for her to see him. And she was like, no problem, but they are still going to get married. But as long as Isha takes care of her children, no problem. I looked at them. I said, even you. You said, I said, I do not accept because I know men that don't cheat on their wives. You will hear things like no man can be a virgin till he gets married. I said, where are all these ideologies coming from? Unfortunately, people that claim to be Christians also. Listen, people of God, the only thing that will stand between a man and his manifestation in this season is his mind. And so you see two people. The men, they are believing every woman is money they like. Don't trust any woman. That's what's in his mind. The woman also, in her mind, don't trust any man. If he sees another woman that is more beautiful, he will go. There is no man that will stay faithful. Just let him. Or you will hear things like, after some time in the marriage, he will lose interest in you. That's what's in his mind of the woman. And so you see two people that come together. They claim to be in a relationship. The man is not trusting the woman. The woman is not trusting the man. Both of them are deceiving themselves. They are both acting. Actors in the house of God. Children of God. But their minds. People of God. God said to tell you, get rid of whatever it is. Anything that is not in my word, get rid of it. Whatever it is that I have not told you, get it out of your mind. Speaking to everyone, including myself. Because I want to do a new thing. But you have to get rid of this old ideology. Old things. Let old things really pass away. So much, so, social media has destroyed a lot of destiny. Because the scripture says, he said, who has believed our report? They believe the report of social media more than they believe the report of God. Is it God that said when two people are in a relationship, they should, they should, they should, they should be acting? You even see it in marriages. Two actors. Why? Because they are still holding on to history. Because God taught us in this house from the word of God. He said, you do two things to history. You either learn from history or you repeat history. Some people, what is in their mind and what they are holding on to is what happened before they came. For example, what happened to their parents? Because this marriage thing that we are talking about now, the, the ideology some people carry about it is what happened to their parents. What has now become new? What has now become new? Maybe they saw their father cheat in the marriage. Because those are my roommates, that's what happened to some of them. They saw their dad, their dad was cheating legit. Is it that you repeat history or you write your own history? You choose one. When you hold on to those things of the past, you automatically repeat it. So what are you going to do with it? Be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect. Will of God. Hi. Eba Kobasha. The word of God is your life. 
If it is not in the word of God, delete it. How can, Minister Joy, how can a man, listen down, man, his life is on the altar. He has made himself a living sacrifice. He has emptied himself. He has exhausted himself on God. And God will not give him the best. It means God is not we is or we claims it. How will you not give him the best? If God says do it, remember at the beginning of the service, God said, what, wherever I tell you to go, or wherever I lead you, rather, follow. Whatever I tell you to do, do. If you do it and you get questions out of it, ask him. He's the one that told you to do it. <laughs> if he asked you to go there, and you met, although we have been taught about challenges, but you get somewhere and you don't understand, go back and ask. Second Corinthians 5. We just read 17, right? Go to verse 16 now. 16. Wherefore, Henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more after the flesh. God said in this season, know no man after the flesh. Know no man after the flesh. Your definition of who that man is should not be after the flesh. What has God told you about the person? What has God told you about the situation? What has God told you about this assignment? That is the only thing to hold on to. Not what you see. Because we walk by faith, not by sight. That is what to do in this season. Because God is going to make everything new. That's what he's doing in this season. All things, have, all things indeed have become new in this season. A very important key. No, no man. After the flesh. Apostle Paul said we knew Christ after the flesh. But now we don't know him anymore after the flesh. Because when he was among us, we knew him as ah, Jesus, son of Joseph, the carpenter. He's not the son of the carpenter. He's not the son of Mary. Yeah, his brothers, not Joseph and James. Don't we know his sisters? Are his sisters not among us? That's how they knew him. It was after he died, they now said, ah, we don't know him after the flesh anymore. People of God, don't let us miss any opportunity in this season. Complete, completely spirit, completely in the spirit. Every decision from the spirit. Every thought and action from the spirit. No flesh. Somebody say no flesh. Somebody say no flesh. No say no flesh. no flesh. Every decision you want to make, what is God saying about it? This person that is around me, what is God saying about them? Not, hmm. The Afuku said, I remember one story that I heard. One time ago, they told me that they said, they said, they have said, no. The only thing that we, God wants to hear is God said. The only thing that should be said in this season is God has said. So God said that. The word of God said that. The word of God says that. 
That's the only thing we say in this The word of God says, God has said, I've been taught in the word of God. That's the only thing that should be in your mouth. Not they said, I heard that in my opinion. From what I know, from experience, delete it. Delete those experiences. Delete them. Delete those yeses. Delete them. Those of us that are leaders, the kind of people you begin to lead from now on, they are people that you have never experienced before. When they come, don't go and treat them like the ones that came before. Delete it. Because the Bible makes us understand in Isaiah 43. Verse 19. My goodness. My goodness. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. But there is an instruction, verse 18. Verse 18. Remember ye not the... Neither consider the things of... That's the instruction. Remember ye not the former thing. Our time is so much fast spent in this service. It's time to pray. New things, says the Spirit of God, in this season. New things. New things. We are getting rid of things that God has not said. We are rewriting history in this season. We are not repeating history. We are following the word of God solely. We are going back to our notes, what God has said. That's the only thing that we are following in this season. We are getting rid of old experiences. Holding on to the word of God alone. I love the way some of us are praying. Pray in your spirit. Because God is working on our minds in this season. Don't forget that what happens in this season is that we pray. We pray. People of God, you just have one minute in this service. Pray. Because God is working on our minds. God is working on our minds. God is working on our minds. The word of God is what characterizes our experiences. Not experiences of before. This is our season of harvest. This is our season of the new, 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 new experiences. We are making history. We are not repeating history. New experiences in our evangelism. New experiences in our soul winning. New. 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 I really love the way some of us are praying. Can we lift up our hands and pray? Everyone online on, on site, pray. Because God is doing new. Changing the whole. Changing our experiences. Rikada bada 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 bada
She's been pregnant. It was time for her to deliver, but very faithful, very faithful to the work of God. I remember she still sang on Sunday with the choir. On Tuesday night, it was time for her to deliver. So she spoke to her life class teacher. She wants to, she's, she's at the hospital, right? Her life class teacher went there. So the teacher texted me immediately and said, I'm here and she's already in labor. I told her, I said, stay there. And so she started. First of all, the, the first testimony is that the labor was short for her, because that was her first time delivery. Very short. She got there around 8 or 9. By 1 a.m., she had already delivered. But that's not the end of the testimony. The baby came out. And they said the baby had stopped feeding in the womb. So the baby came out and was not breathing. But the person I was communicating with me, one of my leaders that is a life class teacher, she told me, she texted me, she said, the baby came out and was purple, not breathing. But the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God took over in that room. And in a few minutes, that baby came back to life. Came to life, actually. The baby came to life. Kaba <laughs> shatalaba. Igando brato basha, breke teleba, liganda na, pisuma. When you come to church, you make the most of every opportunity. When it's time to pray, you pray. I remember in our workers' meeting on Saturday, that woman was sitting directly in front of me. Doesn't miss services, doesn't meet miss meetings, doesn't meet doesn't meet anything. She's there. Tell me why God will not show up in that delivery room. I told my church, I said, maximize some weeks ago. Maximize when it's time to pray. Maximize. Because the day will come, you will not be able to pray. It is those prayers you have prayed that will be standing in front of God like this for you. What baby will not come to life? What baby will not breathe? The baby will come to life. Because when we pray, God hears. When we pray, the anointing of God in this house is not dead. The anointing is very much alive. I told my mother, I told her, immediately I got the message, I told mother, I said, this woman is in labor already. And she sent me messages, sent me messages and prophecies. I should not worry. Oh, definitely I will not worry. I remember in the prayer that night, I was praying. It has to be a testimony. It has to be a testimony. The baby that was not alive came alive. That's the anointing of God here. When we pray, God hears us. Lord, I just give you the praise. Lord, I just give you the praise. By the morning, the very morning of that day, she was already at home. This is only what God can do. God is the one that can do this. I give God all the praise. Because God hears us when we pray. I said, God hears us when we pray. 
I said God hears us when we pray. And let's get ready. There will be multiple deliveries this weekend. Every kind of delivery. Thus say the spirit of grace. Every kind of delivery. Get ready. Get ready. For those of you that are expecting certain results. Our time is fast spent in this service. But if I give you one more minute to pray. Will you pray people of God. And declare deliveries. Declare deliveries. Declare deliveries. Because this weekend is a weekend of testimonies. One more minute, people of God, lift your hands and pray. We declare deliveries. In the show on Sunday, in the show on Sunday, I, I believe that things are already happening. Deliveries. In our rallies, in our evangelism, deliveries, 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 deliveries. As we are declaring it, it is coming to pass. As we are declaring it, it is coming to pass. As we are declaring it, we are coming, it's coming to pass. Deliveries. Papa Bashata Lava. Igada Bashata. Yagada Bayanaba. Prata Lava Shata. Egabados. Rebrados. Brenene. Rebasha. Ragada. Deliveries. It's time for deliveries. It is time for harvest. It is time for harvest. Thirty more seconds. Yabasha. Hey. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I just give you praise. Keba shatalaba. Kaba shana na bayaba. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone lift your two hands. Every kind of delivery you are expecting. In the name of the Lord that we serve. I declare. Receive them right now. Receive them right now. Take your deliveries right now. Take your deliveries right now. For every expectation this weekend. Don't stand the spirit of God for everyone that has expectations. Receive your expectations right now. The Bible says the expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. I declare on you every expectation. Receive them right now. And we prophesy. We prophesy as one toward Sunday. As I'm stretching my hands right now, the hand of God is on that all. The hand of God is on that environment. Every nook and cranny of that environment right now, I see the hand of God shadowing that place. I declare, and we declare as one spirit, one, one body. Every expectation, we receive them right now. God said to me, he said, I'm the one that is working. He said, I'm the one doing the work. He said, I'm the one doing the work. Everyone that is working there, listen to the voice of God. God said, I'm the one doing the work. Not by power, nor by mind, but by my spirit. By my spirit. God said, I am the one doing the work. Everything by my spirit. By my spirit. We receive results by my spirit. Say the spirit of God by his spirit, by his spirit, by his spirit, everything by his spirit, everything by his spirit. Lord, we give you praise. Testimonies by his spirit. How many of us are coming back on Sunday with testimonies by his spirit? Not by power, not by might, but my my spirit. Hey, I see divine alignment. Alignment. I see alignment. I see things coming together. I see it coming together. I see it coming together. Whoop! I see it coming together. I see it coming together. Lord, I just give you the praise. 
Oh. Woo. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. Whoa, Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I just give you praise. Lord, I just give you the praise. Please, let's have our seat. As they come in together. Okay, are you on, sir? F. Let's try D. Lord, I just give you the praise, Lord. Jehovah, 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 Covenant Keeper, Miracle Worker. That is who you are. Covenant and keep on miracle worker. That is who you are. Jehovah, Jehovah, Eba Koba Shataya. Jehovah, Jehovah, you are my covenant keeper, miracle worker, that is who you are, Kaba Shatala Baya 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 People of God, can we prepare our offerings while I sing? Jehovah, 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 hey, hey. you are the covenant and keeper, miracle worker, that is who. You ride on the wings of the wind. You ride on the wings of the wind.
Or we're giving us on our left hand and raise our right hands to God. I declare that every giving tonight is accepted. Break God said it is time for you to break some limitations. God said it is time for us to break down some walls. God said it is time for us to break down some ideologies. Hey, Lord, I give you praise. The word of God is the only thing that will characterize our finances from now on. It doesn't matter what is happening in the economy of this world. The word of God is going to characterize your finances. Lord, we give you the praise. We are ready, Lord. Deliveries in finances. I see some of us, we have some expectations. Financial expectations. Get ready. Receive it right now. Deliveries of those expectations. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, I just give you the praise. Lord, I just give you the praise. What a service. What a service. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We can go ahead now and give our giving and do our giving. Lord, I just give you the praise. Lord, I just give you the praise. I see harvest like never before. Harvest like never before. Because now we have given God more room. More room. More room. More room is going to express himself more now in our finances. Express himself more now in our results. Lord, I just give you the prayer. Woo! I have a word of the Lord from the Lord for our grandmas. This God said, get ready for new testimony new testimonies. Our mothers, our mothers and our grandmas, get ready for new testimonies. You are going to have new testimonies. Those expectations, you are receiving them right now. God said there are some of us that have had expectations for a while. Get ready. We are going to have our expectations come to pass. Lord, I just give you the praise. Lord, I just give you the praise. Glory to your name, Lord. Are we done with our giving now? All right. In this beautiful service, do we have people that are coming and worshiping with us for the first time? Anyone like that worshiping with us for the first time? Can you just raise your hand so we can know it's you? Wow, we have a wonderful brother there at the back. This is so wonderful. Anyone else coming for the first time? Anybody else? Anyone else? Maybe there are some other people. Our wonderful, wonderful brother, can you please rise up on your feet? Oh, it's not. Okay, he was just waving his hands. Oh, that's serious. I think it was the Spirit of God was telling him some things. He was waving his hands. But there's someone at the back. Oh, beautiful. I can't really see the person, but I'm, I'm thinking it's a, it's a woman. She's a woman. We love you so much. Can we celebrate her? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Ma'am, we want you to know, it's a woman, right? Can somebody please let me confirm? So I want a woman. Ma'am, we want you to know that you're one of the best things that happened to us in this service. We love you so much. Thanks for worshiping with us. And we won't want you to go home just yet. If you'll give us just a few more minutes of your time, we would like to pray, have a word of prayer with you and tell you the next level of your life because that is exactly why God brought you here. He didn't bring you here just to come and attend another service. He brought you here so that he can take you to the next level of your life and destiny. So if you don't mind, can you pack all everything you came to church with right now and come to that man standing by the door. He's waving his hands right now, standing on the door, at the door. Please come to him right now. He's going to take you 
to where we are going to be meeting with you after the service. Can we continue celebrating this woman? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Likewise, for everyone that is coming online, we celebrate you greatly. Please reach out to that number that is on the screen. We are going to welcome you properly and tell you the next level also. We love you so much. One more time, can we celebrate all our first-time guests? We love you so much. We celebrate you greatly. Amen. One more time, I would like to celebrate our father and our mother, you know, right now in Abuja. This is the first time anything like that. This is the first time anything like that is happening. Going from one location to the next. That's to tell us what God is doing in this season. He's giving us expansions. Expansion. Everywhere we are expanding. Somebody say expansion. Say expansion. Say we are expanding. Do you receive it? Every business owner, do you receive expansion? You are going to be going from one business location to another. From one business meeting to another. From one kingdom meeting to another. Are you ready for this? We celebrate your spirit, great living and mother. Thank you so much for this opportunity you have given to us. Thank you so much for the word of God that you have planted in our spirit. In the same vein, we celebrate everyone also doing the work. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in, our, in the highest. Was your neighbor a good neighbor tonight? Can you tell them one thing that they did that blessed you the most? What did your neighbor do that blessed you the most? So that they can continue and take it to the next level in the next service. What did your neighbor do? Some people are really loving on their neighbors. They were the best. It's like you want to sit beside that neighbor again. You're going to sit beside that neighbor again. Glory to God. And we are getting ready for massive testimonies this weekend. In the name of our Lord. In Jesus' name. In the spirit of our Father, I want you to know that I love you and we love being your pastors because they are the best pastors. They are not just a congregation, the best pastors that can be pastors. It's such a privilege to be a pastor of pastors, of apostles, of evangelists, of prophets, of teachers. Amen. And uh, like my father will always say, I am Pastor Temple Omole, and I am the Central Minister of MPCPDML Bush. And if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. God bless me, us all and see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.